Hello, I'm Mortgage Mike and welcome to another weekly edition of your Mortgage Industry Update. Today's topic is on the QRM. What is a QRM? Well, QRM stands for Qualified Residential Mortgage. And it uh, would more commonly be known as skin in the game, risk retention requirements for lenders. Um, it's a byproduct of the Dodd-Frank bill that comes out of obviously the financial meltdown and housing crisis that we're facing today. And in, in the body of the Dodd-Frank bill is what is a qualified residential mortgage or a definition of what a qualified residential mortgage is. And what a qualified residential mortgage wants to do from a legislative standpoint is really protect consumers and actually the financial industry from the mistakes that we made in the past. Now the problem that we have with that is that uh, there's a narrowly defined set of guidelines that creates a qualified residential mortgage. Uh, and it makes it, one, pretty tough to, to uh, qualify for a qualified residential mortgage. And two, if you don't apply or qualify in that arena, then you're, uh, as a lender, are expected to have some skin in the game or 5% risk retention. So in a $100,000 mortgage, that's $5,000, $200,000 mortgage, you know, 10000 I mean, so on and so on. So the cost of financing goes up if we don't fit in the qualified residential mortgage arena. Now, the trick here is that the qualified residential mortgage is defined by down payment which is proposed at 10 to 20 percent depending on uh, what makes its way through. Uh, the second thing is we have overly restrictive FICO requirements and thirdly we have some uh, we have some really tough debt to income uh, ratio requirements that we have to meet. So what does this all mean if you don't if your loan does not hit the qualified residential mortgage? Well if it doesn't meet this band that is a qualified residential mortgage well that means that the cost of financing is going to go up. And when we look at the cost of financing going up uh, for non-qualified residential mortgages, you can expect from the studies to be anywhere from three quarters of a point to a point more in financing, which is a pretty significant cost. Now, let's start looking at some of the, the problems, especially in regards to down payment and using down payment as a requirement or a litmus test for a qualified residential mortgage or making a good mortgage. If we increase our down payment by 5%, so if we go from 5% to 10% down payment, we're looking at a default rate increasing, I'm looking at my notes, by less than half of a percent. So we're asking buyers to come up with 5% more money, only to have a default risk of half a percent more. Um, does that make any sense? I don't know. Secondly, we look at a 20% down payment, and we begin to see that a 20% 20, 20 down payment uh, only increases the default rate by less than 1%. So we're asking our buyers to come up with more money, but there's not a there's not a correlating decrease in the default rate in the loan. So down payment has no real impact in regards to the, um, the ability of a buyer to repay their mortgage or, or whether or not they default. So, but then now the big thing is, is that we ask people to save 10, 20% of their down payment. How long is it gonna take them to do that? How many people do we cut out of the marketplace? And that's really the big deal that we gotta be paying attention to. If we're on the road to housing recovery, we're gonna need more people to get in homes. We put restrictions like this in place and we're not going to be putting people on homes. So um, what does a qualified residential mean, uh, mortgage mean to us here in Texas? Well, quite honestly, there's not too much of an impact. I mean, it has a lot bigger of an impact for the rest of the country, i.e. California, New York, places where you have high average loan amounts, um, you know, well above the conforming loan limit. Um, it's the jumbo market that's going to be affected. We're going to see loans at over $417,000. How do we securitize those? Those are risky loans. What do we do with them? cost of financing goes up if anybody wants to finance those. So we become, <clears throat> we really restrict the jumbo market. Um, and there's also, <clears throat> pardon me, a provision in there uh, at the moment that gives us an exemption for the, the government sponsored enterprises, which, which would be FHA, VA, uh, Fannie and Freddie. Now our problem is, is that when Fannie and Freddie come out of conservatorship, what does that mean for us? Does that mean that those loans do not fit um, a qualified residential mortgage? Um, or are they going to be qualified residential mortgages and we're going to have to look at these more stringent underwriting guidelines? I don't know, but that's really the big deal that we need to be paying attention to down here because Fannie and Freddie are the big wild card right now. And if this goes through, it's going to have a huge impact for us. So what I've done is I've left you some uh, links at the bottom of this screen down here. And uh, please uh, click on those links, make comments. We have some time to do that and uh, get your voice heard. I'm Mortgage Mike saying thanks for listening. Spread the love. Heal the world.